This is 2009 AMC 12B problem number 23. A region S in the complex plane is defined by region S is equal to a set of all complex numbers x plus i y such that x is between negative 1 and 1 and y is between negative 1 and 1. So basically, the real part, the x is between negative 1 and 1 and the imaginary part, y is also going to vary between negative 1 and 1. So how can we, how can we graph this? So if we have a complex plane, that's the real axis and that's the imaginary axis. Our axis is going to vary between negative 1 and 1 and same thing for our y. And we are going to include negative 1 and 1. So you have this square with a side length of 2. So this entire region is the region S. So let me shade it. So this is the region S we are talking about. Let's continue reading the question. A complex number z is equal to x plus i y is chosen uniformly at random from s. So we have an area of 4. So area of 4 because it's a square with side length 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And out of this area of 4, you're going to pick a number x plus i y at random. And we wish to find the probability that 3 fourths plus 3 fourths i times z is also in s. Let me simplify this a bit. Let's get 3 fourths out of the, out of the quantity. So we have 3 fourths times 1 plus i. I'm just factoring 3 fourths out. And z is same thing as x plus i y. They told us that x plus i y. And we wish to find the probability that this thing is going to be within s. So what we're doing, you're picking a complex number. So let's say you pick this one. You're picking this complex number x plus i y within this region. You are multiplying it by 3 fourths and 1 plus i. And you're going to get another imaginary number, maybe one here, maybe one inside. And we wish to find the probability that it's going to be inside. So if it's outside, that's not what we want. So let's try to see if we can figure out what to do. So let's start by multiplying this out. So you have 3 fourths times you're going to have 1 times x, which is x. You're going to have i times i plus y, which is going to be negative y, because i squared is negative 1. So you have x plus y, and you're going to have an imaginary coefficient. You're going to have x times i, and you're going to have 1 times i y, so that's going to be plus y. So when you evaluate this, you get 3 fourths times x minus y plus i times x plus y. And since we want this imaginary number to be in s, you want this thing to be in the region, you want the real part of you want the real part of this number, let's call it w. So you want the real part of the number to be between negative 1 and 1, and the imaginary part of this number to be between negative 1 and 1, because that's the reason you're describing. So you want the real part, 3 fourths times x minus y, to be between negative 1 and 1, and you want the imaginary part, uh, x, 3 fourths times x plus y in this case, 3 fourths times x plus y to be between negative 1 and 1. And let's try to simplify this a bit. So let's start by multiplying by 4, four thirds. So you have negative 4 thirds is less than or equal to x minus y is less than or equal to 1. And let's subtract x. So you have negative 4 thirds minus x is less than or equal to negative y minus Oh, that, that should be 4 thirds, so 4 thirds minus x. So I'm multiplying by 4 thirds, subtracting x, and now I'm going to multiply by negative 1, so you're just going to have y. But since you're multiplying by negative, you should flip the sign, and you have 4 thirds plus x, and negative 4 thirds plus x on this side. How about, so that's one of the inequalities we got, so that's one compound inequality we obtain from this from this constraint. And how about this side? Let's do the same thing. Multiply by uh, 4 thirds. x plus y is less than or equal to 4 thirds. Subtracting x gets us negative x minus 4 thirds is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to negative x plus 4 thirds. 
So you have these four equations to work with. So you have one equation right here. That's one equation. You have another equation right here and same for, same for the other side. So you have four equations we can work with. So let's try to graph this. So you are starting with, you are starting with the values between, within the square, within the square. Let me redraw the region. So you have this region. You're picking the imaginary number from. And we want the, the imaginary number we pick to, be, to satisfy all of these four constraints. So let's try to graph them. The first one is going to be 4 thirds plus x is greater than or equal to y. You can graph that like this. 4 thirds is more than 1. So it's going to be something like this. And you have a line going through. Four, no, 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 4 thirds plus x. So you want, you want it to go through this point negative four thirds. So you have the first line going through like this. Let me make it more straight. So something like this. Yes. Next one, y is greater than or equal to negative four thirds plus x. That's going to be, let me extend this a bit, negative four thirds plus x. So it's going to go like this. So we want our value to be, to be greater, to be less than, less than this one our y to be less than this one. So you want to go down from this line and you want our y to be greater than this line. So we are going to draw an up arrow. So we know our region is going to be within this part of the square. Let's continue. Let's look at this equation. You want your line. So let's try graphing them. You have negative x minus four thirds, which is, which is like this, this green line going through, and you want your y to be greater than this, and you have another line going through like this, and you want your y to be less than this. So basically, the reason you're looking at, the reason you're looking at is this. Let me shade it. It's the one that looks like this. It's the one that looks like this. The only reason that's excluded, let me make sure we know which one's excluded. Excluded from the reason is this part. This part this part and this part. So how can we find the answer? Well, the entire area is equal to four and we wish to, we wish to find, so out of this area, we wish to find the probability that our number is within this green, green area that satisfies all of our inequalities. And this green line, let's call it area of, I think it's octagon. So we have to find area of the octagon and divide by four. And finding area of octagon seems hard. So let's start by finding area of this triangle and we can subtract it from the entire thing to find area of octagon. So this green line is equal to y equals to negative negative x plus four thirds. So we wish to find this intersection point, this intersection point, and that occurs when x is equal to one. So plugging x equals to one into this gets you y is equal to one third. So this distance is one third. So this distance is two thirds. So that's telling you this distance is also two thirds by symmetry. So we have area of this orange triangle, area of the triangle being equal to two thirds times two thirds over two or two nines because that's four nines divided by two. So area of all four triangle, area of all four triangles is equal to eight nines. So area of the octagon is going to be for the entire area subtracting eight nines, which is equal to, so that's 36 minus eight, 28 over nine. So we wish to find area of octagon divided by four or 28 over nine times one fourth. And the answer is seven nines. So our final answer for this question is D.